we will today start a very interesting and very important question in finance. What is ratios? Ratios in financial analysis. To be quite more precise, we will talk about ratios from financial statement. I need to say something at the very beginning that some people think that ratios are just some kind of a ratio. We'll talk later how we construct it and, and that it doesn't bring too much information. It's a fair view, it's a fair view, but what would bring us more information about company? And in this angle of approach, I would say that ratios are by far the best, at least in my opinion. <coughs> at least in my opinion. So we will talk about ratios, but slowly. We, have, we need some kind of introduction. I mean, when I mean slowly, I don't mean slowly, but methodically, step by step. At the beginning, because it's late and it's Friday and there was an advice to wake you up a bit, I will, um, I will um, repeat what I said the last time. And I'm sort of making the um, advanced uh, learning approach. So now I would say <laughs> Hopefully it was well pronounced. So now you are well awake and I hope <laughs> for this lecture. Right, analysis and management accounting. Now nah, this is the story because there's a sort of many different issues that go all around the same thing. How to understand the business of the company? You know, we have the company, we have the business. How to understand this? How to get the knowledge? And of course, that there is some analysts, there are some managers, even there is something called management accounting. I know there are fantastic specialists in CDUFE about financial accounting. And they explain to you everything about financial um, accounting, means this sort of that you need to do in order to produce the reports. And they are with certain rules. Management accounting is like you just set your rules, the the whole concept is that when you do the analysis from the point of view of management accounting, it means that you are looking for something, something specific and you just want some tools just to find this specific answer, not the whole report. You just don't care. You just don't care if it's uh, with the law or, or not with the law because the, the sort of Financial accounting or reporting accounting is for external purposes. Management accounting is for internal purposes. So we set our rules. We want to know about our company. So again, we have like two approaches to financial statement analysis. One would be somebody takes the financial statement from outside the company and tries to analyze that or there will be a situation when we want to know something about our company for us or a small manager somewhere in our big company would like to know so he will not ask his boss or whoever he will take the official statements and will compute all the information himself or herself. We have a very nice de uh, description. What is management accounting and ratio analysis? 
the process of identification, measurement, accumulation, analysis, preparation, interpretation, and communication of financial information used by management to plan, evaluate, and control an organization and to assure appropriate use of accountability for its resources. Management accounting also comprises the preparation of financial reports for non-management groups such as shareholders, creditors, regulatory agencies and tax authorities. What a beautiful description. So you could see that in this process of analysis by management accounting, obviously we need some tools. We need some tools, therefore, inevitably, we will go for ratios in order to present our conclusions in a way that it's clear, comparable, and sort of easy to understand by everybody engaged in this business. And again, to wake you up, there is a small picture uh, when the gentleman looking at the annual report says, I'm sorry, Parker, but I don't think it's confusing enough because <laughs> there is a warning, obviously, that sometimes companies prepare the statements in a way that it's covering something, that it's not re revealing an important information, or sort of showing at an angle or in a construction that hides the real happenings in the company. But to be, sh to be frank and to be open, the role of analysts is just this informi information value chain, because they provide for all other people in, um, in the organization. So like, like framework for converting data into information. Yeah, they, they, they take ratios and they uh, calculate ratios and then they present the information. And as well, sometimes it's like uh, these analysts taking the ratios. They, they allow a strategic business partner to attend along this information value chain. Right, so maybe this is a role of analysts. Then the gentleman at this uh, human resources department, he says, I like the creative way you manipulate reality. You may be just the man we need to write our corporate annual reports. You see, sometimes companies just recruit people who write financial statements in a way that it is difficult to understand for other people, for other users. Therefore, we have all these tools, namely ratios, to compute and to understand what's going on in the company. Wow, well, now it's getting harder. So please take a deep, deep breath because we are entering the field of accountancy for the moment because we now are going to concentrate on balance sheet. Balance sheet. Uh, as I said, there are other much better specialists about balance sheet, so they will do the job. I will just say that the balance sheet is one of the key elements in the financial statement. Absolutely fundamental document, because the other documents, the main ones, are the income statement, sometimes called profit and loss account, and the statement of cash flows. Balance sheet, however, is, as I said, fundamental because it says what's, what's uh, 
in a possession of company. It, sh it shows the body. What is the body of the company? This is balance sheet. And as well, I have two other definitions. One is from a very good book, Body Merton. A firm's balance sheet shows its assets, what it owns, and its liabilities, what it owes to other people. At a point of time, this is very important, at a point of time, the difference between assets and liabilities is the firm net worth. It's very important because the balance sheet is at the point of time for a specific date. We construct the balance sheet, usually it's the last day of the year, 31st of December in European situation. However, it's the last day of a like period of operations. So sometimes companies operate, particularly in agricultural business, they operate from 1st September to 21st of August or from 1st October to 30th of September. So they have like different um, year of operation. But generally it's at the point of time, usually it's done yearly. That's very important. And another definition from Brigham and Erhardt, uh, as well a very good book. Balance sheet is a statement of the firm's financial position at a specific point in time. It specifically lists the firm's assets on one side and liabilities and equity on the other side. Yes, indeed, this is the balance sheet, like assets on one side, what's owned and liabilities and equities. I mean, where is money from, basically speaking. Uh, so maybe then it's this small picture again, because sometimes in, in these reports, there are some um, nasty surprises. So this is like global airlines reading the annual report. As I come to the balance sheet figures, oxygen masks will drop down from the ceiling because it's so unexpected catastrophe, so oxygen. What is it all about? Balance sheet. Actually, what happens is that there are some accounting standards in the world. That's true. Uh, however, Mm, some expressions may vary, as we know from the very beginning. I told you, perhaps I told you, that finance as a part of economics is not a very precise science like physics, but as well it's not art, but it's somewhere in between like medicine. So, in general we have some rules what to do and how to behave, and what is the good procedure, what is uh, bad, but still we are not always sure. Therefore, for example, certain countries have certain expressions. The, the best, the best um, example would be the same document in the United States, it's called income statement. In uh, Europe, in Britain, it's called profit and loss account. And uh, as well, we could start with income, gross income, revenues, sales, different words, but meaning is the same. So we have to be very, very attentive to know what we are looking at. Therefore, obviously, there are not no mandatory regulations. I mean, there are some in some countries, obviously, but not globally. And some indication of customer, customer usage. What happens is that the whole concept of this balance sheet is to find this net worth. How much the company is really worth because company can borrow money, sort of live on a borrowed money. So it's not really the worth. So what we do, the, this first equation, the most important balance sheet equation from the point of view of finance is assets minus liabilities net worth. 
Okay, so it's just a typical setup. We need to know before we go to ratios. Here we will have only ratios related to balance sheet. We need to know what is where. So in classic, very typical setup, we will have assets on one side, typically on left, and then it, they will start with the most, most, most liquid, and then they will end up with the least liquid or even very difficult to be tangible, right? So obviously we will start this um, left side with current assets and cash, cash, banknotes, money. I mean, nowadays it's money on bank accounts. So cash and cash equivalents like marketable securities. If you have shares traded on stock exchange, you could normally, in normal circumstances, you will be able to sell them the same day if you really need. So then short-term investments would be next. You could liquidate them quite fast. Accounts receivable, including trade receivable and others. You know, this is what you, you receive from your partners in business. And then inventories, I mean stock. I mean, some systems use the word inventory, some use the word stock. Your products that you have in your uh, company. Then assets held for sale. I mean, you bought something for a moment, but then you plan to sell it. I don't know, the land or something like this. Prepaid expenses. Then you go to non-current fixed assets. This is what company normally operates on, like properties, buildings, land, locals, uh, plants, equipment, machinery, installation, anything that is tangible. Then obviously less accumulated depreciation because it's worth less and less. Then intangible assets, goodwill. I mean, you could add some more things. I suppose other professors are, are better in this than I am. And then liabilities on the other side. So firstly, liabilities and equity, of course. So you uh, liabilities, it's what you are going to give back to people as money. So you have current liabilities, like you, firstly that you owe something in your business, in your trade, then short term debt, uh, you have all payrolls, for example, uh, current tax liabilities, and then you go to non-current non or long-term liabilities. You know, in order to run a proper business, most likely you borrowed a lot of money for a long term because you need to operate, we'll talk about this later, why is it very good to operate on some amount of borrowed money. And then equity. Equity, this is at the very beginning uh, when the company started, people put money into the company. They did it once, this money is in the company. And then when they needed to grow, possibly they sort of paid more money in this company, own money from their own pocket. And then when the company grows and has some profits, Inevitably, there are some return, retained uh, profits, retained earnings. Again, we have different words for that. Now, just to wake you up after this uh, hard, really hard uh, uh, accountancy, there is a nice picture again, a cartoon. Yeah, but I, it did not cost anything, dear. I mean, the lady goes with from shopping. It did not cost anything, dear. I did it all of a balance sheet. Now, there's an expression that some operations are done outside the balance sheet. Now it's, a, it's a really um, very developed accountancy. So sometimes you really need to read some more things because some, sometimes there's an agreement that is still not shown in the balance sheet but will have a result on balance sheet or some kind in future some regulations might change and then it will have influence on your balance sheet right so you will you will find so ratios 
finally, we have ratios. Ratio. Let's look on this very closely. Ratio is an expression of relationship between two or more items in mathematical terms. And normally, ratio, because it's something to something, has numerator divided by denominator. And then we have a pure number, it's just a number. So it's numerator divided by denominator. And balance sheet ratio analysis means that both numerator and denominator are taken from the balance sheet. Therefore, we use only this document in our exercise about these particular ratios, balance sheet ratios. Why ratios? As I said, some people, some practitioners, some businessmen, they would say, oh, it's only ratios, so it's only figures, it doesn't really matter. You know, I don't need to count anything, I just feel it. You know? Look on, this, on, on the recording of my face, they feel with nose, yeah? they feel like, oh, we should do this business. Probably. Or they have some agreements with, I don't know, with the state, which is not very much legal, perhaps. But there is quite a number of reasons for implementing ratios into your analysis. This is the list. And that is, um, <clears throat> these lines are as, as, as such. To assess and measure operative efficiency. Efficiency, this is the core of the business. People do business not for fun, I mean, maybe sometimes, but in general principle, people are rational. They do it for the efficiency. They put some money into the business to have much more money, as clear as that. Then, to measure liquidity, solvency, profitability, and managerial efficiency. Yes, this business, a part of being successful, needs to be operational. So therefore, liquidity, solvency, profitability. Then, to optimize capital structure. Yes, we will talk about it, hopefully. Weighted average cost of capital. Yeah, you need to structure your capital in your company in a way that it suits the best your business and obviously has the best result in your performance. To know the financial strength and weakness of an organization. How much comment should I say? Yes, it is. Because, you know, when you operate a certain business, you must know in which you are very competitive and where is the point that you are weak and somebody might take the advantage of that. So, and then to review past year's activity. Yeah, we have this financial statement for a year, say for 2019, and we want to know how well company performed. We want to give some measures, and we do it like year after year, year after year. And we compute the ratios, and then by simply comparing the numbers, we could arrive to comparison of the review of the activity. And then with these numbers as well, we could predict or foresee future plans of this particular business. And then again, which is not uh, uh, a long way from our core investigation, yet the proper utilization of assets of the company. You know, you might think there's a small business with one, one, one room, one house, one line. But if you have a very huge organization with many, many businesses, you know, you have loads of assets and you, your role is not to make them idle. Then you prepare a budget and as well, you might need to investigate uh, solvency of the firm or if the company is in 
bankruptcy position. It's quite an important issue. And finally, perhaps I should put it in big, big letters in red color. Finally, ratios are fantastic to compare between the companies. Obviously, we have to remember that we just, we just do not compare a company to a company without any sense. No, no, no. We compare, for example, uh, I mean, companies in the same business, like we are in the business and others, we compare the, the ratios. Or we are in the business, somebody else is in the business, we want to buy another business, then we compare. And it's fantastic because in certain industries, certain ratios should be on certain level. And if it's outside of this, say, brackets, then it means that something not entirely normal happens in this company. Therefore, this comparison between the companies is very, very important and the ratios are ideal tool to do it. I want to underline again how uh, useful is using ratios in comparing between different companies or different entities. But always remember, if this comparison is going to be meaningful, these companies must be of the same business. Or you watch them from the point of view of financial investor and only money that counts. But if you are um, assessing the performance with the ratios, then always remember that they have to be fairly similar. Then, how is with uh, financial statements? I like this cartoon when these two gentlemen say, we are in good shape. Nobody understands our financial statement. It's not true. Students of MAN 2154 of Professor Nagorka, these students that I'm now talking to, they will understand the financial statement. Because, yes, again, sort of the summary from different angle, these advantages of ratio analysis is that, you know, financial statement is quite a long document. An annual report, they, it could be 500 pages. It's a book. It's a huge book. So all these large data in different currencies, in different, in different denominations, they could be summarized into one number using ratio. And then it allows to relate past performance with the current ones, how the company is doing as well, because it has the value of assessing the company along the time, it is well very valuable for future decision making. Again, it's a powerful, very powerful tool to measure solvency of the company. Solvency is an expression, um, how to say, how close to bankruptcy company is. If it's uh, if it's in danger of financial collapse, this is solvency, if there is money in the company. Then, again, this is what I love, it's the measure of profitability. Ah, a company has to be profitable, I mean, it's no, no fun. So, if managers are efficient, then profitability is there to be shown. This is particularly important at the so-called Dupont formula. We will talk about this um, later in one of the lectures. Again, yes, it's a very important tool to measure operating activities. And as well, ratios as tools, they help us uh, in different functional parts of the company. Again, it helps in analyzing capital structure. Capital structure is something important and balance between sales and purchases and working capital requirements. Ratio analysis again in cartoon, this sums it up. 
I hope with me it's not boring, but then we have this gentleman saying, nobody wants to read a boring financial statement. Can you add some sex and violence? <laughs> no, we are not adding anything yet, but we have our ratio classification because there is quite a number of ratios. And again, people call them differently. They group them differently. Everybody has own view on that. And I think this division into these five groups is probably the most important. Uh, liquidity ratios about everything related with like uh, money in the company, I would say. Then capital structure and long-term solvency ratios. This is basically about how company is constructed with what money and how it is placed within the company. Three it is activity ratios. I mean, how turnover ratios, operating ratios, how company is doing on a daily basis. I mean, how it operates generally. And the most lovely four profitability ratios. They are great. What's the real result? Real tangible money. And then five other ratios. Among them, market value ratios. The first two liquidity ratios and capital structure and long-term solvency ratios are so-called balance sheet ratios because all, if not all, the vast majority of uh, figures used to calculate these ratios come from balance sheet. 